Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, the place to be to develop your creative skills. Welcome back to another video. You're looking fantastic as always. And today we're gonna to be jumping into the July update for Adobe XD. Well, I mean, I'm gonna assume it's the July update. I woke up this morning, there was an update, I downloaded it, and I haven't seen a blog post yet. I'm sure there will be a blog post coming soon. And when it's out with the updates and the details for the July update, I will drop that in the description so you can check it out if you want to. But anyway, we're gonna to jump to the screen now and we're gonna go through some of the things that I've noticed in the latest XD update. Boom. Okay, so you can see here, I've got several paragraphs of text and something that is new that has been added is we can now adjust the paragraph spacing with this new option here. So before we could adjust the leading or the line height, which is the space between each of the lines, but now we can adjust the paragraph spacing. So if I bump this up to 10, you can see it increases the space between all of the paragraphs. So that is a fantastic new feature. Right, let's get rid of this text. Something that I'm incredibly excited about is the fact that we now have some more options for the stroke. So if I just draw a line here and we'll crank this up to 20. And we had these options here where we could align the stroke to, but now we've also got the cap options here and we've got the corner options as well. So typically you have the butt cap by default, but we can also select round cap, which just rounds off the ends of a stroke. And we've also got projecting cap as well. So what projecting cap does if I zoom in, is you can see that where the anchor point is that is where the stroke ends. And of course with the round cap, it extends out a little bit. And with the projecting cap, it extends that stroke around the edge as well, just beyond that anchor point. So if I increase the size to 30, you can see that that 30 point stroke or that 30 pixel stroke extends around all of the edges. Now to show you the other ones, I'm going to need to draw a shape. So let's just grab our ellipse tool and We'll bump this up to, we'll go for 30 again, I think. So you can see here, this isn't new, but we can align to the outside, the inside, or the center. So that's from a previous update, but now we can also adjust the corner. So by default, we have the mitre join here, which I can't demonstrate with a circle because there's no corners. Idiot. Right, let's make a square instead. Okay, so we have square corners and I can now use the round join to round those off. And I've also got bevel join as well. So we've got a little bit more control over the corner type and the cap type. And something else that's new that is awesome is we can now add dashes and gaps to paths in XD. So if I add a gap, uh, a dash, sorry, of 20, you can see it creates dashed lines. Now, something I would love to see in a future update is in Illustrator, there's an option that you can check that just makes all of the spacing between the elements equal. So all of the dashes will have equal spacing. So you can see here, it just causes a few issues. But if I just draw a line really quickly, boom, we've got a nice, simple dashed line. And I can adjust the gap as well, so I could make them closer together. In fact, if I round off the corner and set the dash to zero and then increase the spacing, this is a really, really cheeky way to create a dotted line. So if I just grab the ellipse tool again, bump this up, remember just round off that cap, dash of zero, set a gap of whatever, and there we go. So that's a really quick and easy way to create dotted lines. And you can do this all in XD. And one of the reasons I'm so excited for these few additions is I do a lot of icon design. I do it in Illustrator and then I import it or copy and paste it into XD. And now a lot of those tools, those features that you use for icon design, they're finding their way, they're trickling down into XD. So it's just encouraging me to start doing all of that stuff, that icon design in XD now. Okay, so something else that we're going to look at is the asset panel. So if I just go down here and whip out the asset panel, let's just go and create a shape. There we go, nice red circle, and I can add the colors, and I could even add some text. So the asset panel essentially allows me to store and reuse lots of different assets. We could add symbols down there. Let's make a symbol out of that as well. So this was the original view. You could view all of those colors, character styles, and symbols, but now, Oh, now we've got a toggle. So we can go from grid view to list view at the top. And we can now rename colors. 
So if you have primary colors, secondary colors, accent colors, whatever, you can rename them. We can rename text and we can rename symbols as well. So this is a really great evolution for the asset panel. I think it's useful because it just gives you and maybe other people working on your files just a little bit more clarity about each of the different colors, character styles and symbols and what they are. And the last thing that I want to cover is something that I don't think is specifically new to the July update, but I want to touch on it anyway, just because it's been updated quite a lot over the last few months. And if you've never used this before, then this is really, really cool. So if I switch over to a browser, you can see I've got a prototype that I've shared on Adobe XD. And what I can do is I can navigate my screens at the bottom or using the arrow keys, but I can also whip out the comments panel. Now the comments panel has been around for a while and we can see we've got some comments on here. I believe this was done during the live stream with Talon at Max. And now what we can do is we can add our own comment. So we could do this before. Let's just compliment myself. You arrogant sod. <laughs> so what we can do is we can now add a pin and so I could pin this just here, just a general comment, and I can click submit, and it adds this to the comment thread, and I've got the pin there as well, and I can move this around. I can go and edit that comment, so we could change that and go, Aut I can't speak, awesome button design dude, and click save and just move the pin around there, and as I highlight over the pin, you can see it highlights that specific comment and vice versa as well. So that's really useful. And when you've completed a comment or you've done an amend or whatever it is, if you're collaborating with Teams, you can resolve that. And then you've got all the resolved comments here at the bottom. And I can go back in and view those and I couldn't even move it back as an unresolved comment and just switch back there and then delete it if I want to. So the way this is all laid out is just so intuitive. It's effortless to learn how to use this, but it's just great for teams. If you're collaborating with a team, with stakeholders, with anyone really working on a project together, you can now just have comments be added. You can reply to them, edit them, delete them. You can mark them as resolved. You can add pins. There's so much stuff you can do with comments. So I know that's not specific to the July update, but I really wanted to cover that because it's something that I started using a bit more recently. And if you've not seen it before, boom, there you go. And there we go, that's it for the July update video. If you did see anything I missed, please do let me and everyone else know down in the comments. And once there is a blog post detailing the update in full on the Adobe blog, I will add that into the, 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 the can't even speak. I will add that into the, <laughs> I will, I will add that into the description as well. God damn it. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please do leave me a super snappy thumbs up. Take care and I'll see you next time.